All right, I'm gonna show you how to build a race car that complies with the season seven regulations for formula space engineers. In this video, we'll go over the basic factors we look for and how they change the handling of your car. After that, we'll also go over how scripting is set up and how to set up your hotbar. If you've already got all of this set up and need to go over how we actually race, skip ahead to the race rules tutorial. The very first thing to consider when building a race car is how long the wheelbase is. Your wheelbase is the number of blocks between axles, not including the axle itself. Longer wheelbase cars tend to be more stable, and short wheelbase cars have snappier turning, though with added flip risk. The most popular configurations in FSC are between 10 and 12 blocks. You can also consider using even symmetry, where the wheel suspensions are butted up against each other, though this contributes significantly to instability. For a new player friendly configuration, I suggest using odd symmetry with a wheelbase of 12. Note that off-road tire blocks are not allowed for FSE cars, and be sure to place the wheel suspension right side up. Next, we have the underfloor. This is a layer of flat armor panels that connects the entire car and protects the driver. In Season 7, regulations require at least 18 tiles of heavy armor underfloor. Now, let's place our required components. First and foremost, we'll drop our cockpit. If you're using odd symmetry like this, you'll need to have a control seat, as it's the only option with open wheel. After placing, be sure to disable target locking, as that can cause massive lag on the FSC server. Next comes power. You're required to place at least one hydrogen engine, with a maximum allowance of two. At full power, one hydro won't be enough for four wheels, so you can fill the rest of the power draw with small batteries or a small reactor. A second engine is pretty heavy, so on most builds a single small reactor is used. Something worth noting is that large batteries are not allowed. With power setup, we'll also place a single gyro. While not truly a requirement, a gyroscope massively stabilizes the car. Remember that in a race, you are not allowed to use a gyro to turn your car while on the ground. After that, we'll place our programmable block. Most place it on the front of the cockpit, as you will want the screen to look at from first person. Last, we need an antenna. This won't change how your car drives, but you will need it to communicate with the track. After components are placed, it's time for bodywork. FSC cars need to remain open wheel and have front and rear wings. You can make them as large or small as you want, as long as your car stays within the weight limit. FSC car weight is measured by the weight of the grid without the wheels or the driver. An important thing to consider when building is weight distribution. You can view this by hopping into your cockpit, opening the panel with K, hitting the info tab, and checking the show center of mass box. This will drop a faint crosshair onto all grids and can help you decide where to place or remove blocks. Keeping the weight in the middle is a great way to make your car more stable, but it's common to slightly favor the front end for extra turning grip. When shaping the body of your car, you must provide at least a block and a half of armor between the cockpit and the outside of the car. This buffer zone is called the side pod, and it's used in real Formula One to protect the driver from collisions. Taking another look at the underfloor, we will need to cover all critical components in one solid shape that stretches to cover the side pods. Underfloors are different from car to car, and if you're not sure whether the floor counts as covered, FSC directors in the Discord can help. Once you've got your body built, there are a few more components we need to add. Number one, a light centered on the lower back of the car. Second, a pair of lights on the tips of the rear wing. These are required by the Season 7 script, and your car must have them. If you have the DLC blocks, you can also use light panels or offset lights, but for this video, we'll be using blocks available to vanilla players. All right, now that our car is built, it's time for setup and tuning. In the Discord, hit up the FSESS Updates tab and open the pins for the GitHub link to the script. Click on script.cs, then hit Copy Raw Contents button, and nab the script text. Back in game, access your programmable block through the terminal, Scroll down and hit edit. We don't need anything in the default program, so just select it all and get rid of it. After pasting the FSE script, scroll back to the top and take a look at the first three lines. These lines need to be personalized for every car, and you'll need to change them to fit your own. Suspension strength will vary depending on the weight of the car, with heavier cars having higher values. Most FSE cars run with suspension strength somewhere between 9 and 14. Once you're done, hit OK. You'll most likely get an error, this is because block groups are not properly set up. To fix this, we'll need to create groups under very specific names. First, let's set our brake light. Even though it's only one item, we'll make a group of our bottom center light and call it brake light. 
This is case sensitive as well, so be sure to capitalize it. Next, we'll find our corner lights and name them ERS lights. Once this is done, we'll find our programmable block again and hit recompile at the bottom. If all goes well, you'll see a message appear that tells you which version of the script you're running. You'll also see the screen of your programmable block change to the racing HUD. I recommend changing the size of the text to 1.6 so that it fills the entire screen. This screen contains critical data that you will need to reference during the race, so be sure the text is easily readable from first person. If you happen to bury your program block while you are building, you can also use a regular LCD as your race HUD. You can set it as this by renaming the LCD to Driver LCD. Again, be sure to mine capitals as it is case sensitive. And anytime you do any renaming in the terminal, you'll also have to recompile your programmable block. With the scripting now taken care of, let's take a look at tuning our wheel suspension. It's a good idea to name your wheels as you probably will want to manage your front and rear wheels separately. Most sliders are going to be handled by the script, but the ones that aren't will dramatically change the handling of your car. These sliders can be very different from driver to driver, so you should find whatever settings you like most through your own testing. Let's go over what they do. From the very top, we have the steering checkbox. Rear wheel steering is allowed in FSE, and most drivers use some combination of different rear and front wheel angles. Make sure you have propulsion checked on all tires, else your car's acceleration is going to suffer. Brake and parking brake should be enabled, and air shock isn't really a factor in most situations. Moving to the sliders, we first have steering angle. This affects how far your tires can turn to get you around corners. A car's ability to turn without losing grip is somewhat dependent on wheelbase, as very short cars tend to turn extremely quickly, but lose traction at angles that longer cars can easily turn through. For a 10 to 12 wheelbase car, drivers typically set the front wheels to maximum and the rear wheels somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees. Experimenting with your car's steering is one of the most important ways you can adjust it to fit your own driving style. Our next slider down is power, which is handled by the script. This controls how much juice is sent to each wheel, mainly controlling acceleration. When driving normally, all FSE cars are limited to 80% power. You can bump this up to 100% by activating ERS, which will drain a rechargeable battery in the script. The strength slider is also handled by the script, and is one of the three lines we changed in the script itself. This controls how stiff the suspension is, and can affect how your car body leans and rolls while taking corners. Most drivers race with a medium level of strength to reduce what we call clang, which is when the game engine decides to send your car flying as though you hit an invisible bump. Stiff suspension can make your car slightly quicker once you reach high speeds, but the increase in clang is usually not worth it to most drivers. The last slider that's not handled by the script is height offset. This value should be adjusted to place your center of mass below your wheel's center of mass if possible. Setting the offset too high will make your car more prone to rolling over in turns, but setting it all the way on the floor can increase its tendency to clang. Much like steering, finding the right balance is mostly down to how you drive. Lastly, friction and speed limit are handled by the script, and propulsion and steer overrides should be set to zero. And before we leave the terminal, let's take a look at the gyro. Specifically, we're going to set up a flip command so that we can right the car if we end up on our hood. Start by enabling override and then finding the slider that sends your car rolling over its side. The slider you're going to need will depend on the orientation of your gyroscope. After you've found the proper one, set it to maximum and disable override controls. This will allow us to turn flipping on and off without losing the stabilizing benefit of the gyro while we're driving. Okay, now that our car is built, scripted, and tuned, we're ready to set up our hotbar. While sitting in your cockpit, press the G key to bring up the setup screen. Most of our commands are going to be involving the programmable block, and where they go is entirely up to you. There are three main commands that you should have on your hotbar. Number one, DRS, the drag reduction system. This toggle turns your suspension strength to 100%, which makes your car very fast at high speeds, but also very unstable. Number two, ERS, the energy recovery system. This toggle activates your car's ERS battery, which cranks up the power of your wheels to 100%. This helps you accelerate faster and changes your rear wing lights to green. Command number three, LMT, your pit speed limiter. This command slows down your car by limiting both your speed limit and your power, and is mostly used for driving through the pit lane. Moving on, we have the tire change commands. These will instantly change your tire compound and attempt to add wheels if any happen to be missing. Our first compound is hard. These are the longest lasting but least grippy tire and are represented with a white light. 
Next up is Medium, which is a balanced fan favorite compound that shows a yellow light in the back. Next is Soft, a high grip tire that quickly degrades and is shown by a red light. And last we have Ultra, an extremely delicate tire that won't last long but should keep you glued to the road. This one is represented by a purple light. After that's done, our scripting commands are set, but there are a couple normal commands you should also consider adding. Firstly, let's add the gyro command of override controls on off. As I said earlier, this will let us flip our car without needing to access the terminal or get out of it. And second, if you have your back wheels in their own group, many drivers also prefer to have a steering on off toggle available. Track conditions can sometimes change within the course of a lap, and you might want the ability to not turn quite as sharply. Also worth noting, the hotbar gets pretty crowded with this amount of commands. It's not uncommon for drivers to separate a pit hotbar from a race hotbar. How you manage your commands is really up to you. Just remember to write down what button does what somewhere on your car. And there you have it! A car ready for Season 7 of Formula Space Engineers. <laughs>